Hey bag lady, today I'm gonna to be talking about the precision turning tool, the cork eyeglass case video, the four pack video bundle, the March minikins challenge, woven fuse interfacing. I've added two new Disney fabrics to my stash. The book review is for the modern medallion workbook and I'll be showing you how to save pattern pieces using quilters template plastic. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. So hey to all my bag ladies jumping in on the chat. Thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday night and sharing some of your Sunday with me. So I saw everybody in the chat on YouTube and Facebook saying hey. Hey Denise, I saw Tamara say hi. Hi to Linda. Pamela is always joining from YouTube. Thanks for joining me, Pamela. And hi to everybody else. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, just as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself, so these aren't things that I've gotten paid to talk about, but they're just cool things that I found that I want to share with you. So I got an email this past week. Um, it was a really nice email. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the person who sent it, but um, she was very complimentary about my sewing videos, and she said that she could never, ever do videos like I do. Um, she'd have to have like five do-overs and it would be really difficult for her. And I emailed her back and I said, um, bag lady, I have got to be ab just about the shyest person ever. I'm just no good at small talk. So when the parents are waiting to pick the kids up from school, I don't really talk to anybody. I can't make small talk, meaning like talking about the weather, something funny that my kid did. I'm just not good at thinking quickly on my feet in regards to um, talking to people in person. And a couple weeks ago, I asked some friends about finding a speaking coach because even though I'm doing the live shows, there's always room for improvement. And I thought that if I had a speaking coach, maybe I could be more chatty during these chats and have more fun, funny things to say. And they all suggested this um, organization called Toastmasters. I'd never heard of it before, but apparently it's an organization to help people with public speaking. So either people that are deathly afraid of getting up in front of a group of people and talking or just people that want to improve maybe for their, um, for their job or you know being a better salesperson, things like that. Anyway, I'd never heard of Toastmasters. I tried to email a local group to see if I could join and I guess they didn't want me because I didn't get a response back, but I'm gonna try to find another one because I think it would be really interesting to get some feedback and tips about speaking in front of people. Um, I know I could do better. I've always been super shy, um, but doing these chats twice a week has definitely helped me as far as talking to people. So anyway, um, let's jump into the sewing portion. Um, Kicking off the chat is my favorite, as always, the notion of the week. And I sort of touched on this the other day when I was showing how to install a snap. I showed this turning tool. Um, the funny thing about this tool, if you were joining us um, for this past Tuesday on Ask Sarah, I was talking about how my husband had taken this tool from me last year. So I bought this tool last year at a quilt shop in Wisconsin where I was teaching. I think I had the tool for about a week, and then my husband, Danny, took it and used it for something non-sewing related, shame on him, and the tool was lost forever. So I bought another one last week and I'm glad to have it back. But anyway, this is the Precision Turning Tool by RK Distributing. It's one solid piece of metal and on the tip, um, let me hold it by the white um, packaging so you can see it. So the tip of the metal has sort of a metal ball over here and this is really helpful for when you turn fabrics right side out if you have to poke out a corner. I really like using this as opposed to, I was using um, sort of a wooden bamboo chopstick before to turn out my corners. And sometimes I would sort of get a little too ambitious with poking out the corners and make a little hole right through the corner. And this is helpful because that metal ball sort of prevents that. So um, I, I did admit I attempted to track down this tool from the manufacturer to see if I could carry it on my website and I didn't receive a reply from them, but I do have a link in the description if you're interested in finding it. I actually had a hard time finding this. It's not available in a lot of places and I could only find it online. Uh, but anyway, this is the precision turning tool. I think it was around, well, the packaging says 1999, so it must have been around $20. But um, I liked it so much I bought it the second time after Danny lost it. So I'm 
keeping this under lock and key with my fabric scissors so nothing happens to the second one because I don't want to have to find it again. Um, but anyway, if you're interested in this turning tool, just check the link in the description and you can find out more there. So if you were around this past Tuesday, um, not Tuesday, earlier in the week, uh, we posted a video on YouTube for this easy cork eyeglass case and um, it was for members of cork club just using a small piece of cork, so a nine inch by seven in inch piece of cork. That was the requirements for the projects that I had to come up with. So um, in case you missed that, it's a free video on YouTube and I made a whole bunch of them just so I could show you different variations for the closure. So um, this green one has just a little strip of non-sew Velcro. So this is Velcro that just sticks to fabric. I made another one with, um, it, it's sort of lined with another layer of cork and this is a strip of Velcro. And I made a few with a pearl snap. So just a fun little project, comes together quick and easy. easy. I know Tamara is watching right now from Facebook. Tamara made a whole bunch and she lined them with um, quilting cotton on the inside. The quilting cotton was cut raw. So a really quick and easy project. Um, they fit just regular eyeglasses. So if you have a friend or maybe yourself, you have those really large sunglasses, like sort of like fashionable sunglasses. I don't think most of those will fit in here just because um, the size of the case, it's for, you know, traditionally sized eyeglasses. But anyway, just a quick and fun project and a great chance to use cork if you haven't used it before. So um, check the link in the description if you're interested in finding that free video. Um, another thing that I had to tell you about is the March challenge for the Minikins is for the Sidewinder pouch. So every month this year, we'll be having a challenge on my website for one of the projects of the Minikins. And if you're not familiar with the Minikins, it's 12 projects, PDF patterns with videos. So the videos are really nice to go along with the PDF patterns. And all you have to do to enter the March challenge is make a Sidewinder pouch, post a photo of your finished pouch on my website, and I'll have a drawing at the end of March for a $100 gift certificate to my shop. And you can spend it on anything you want, sewing patterns, cork fabric. Um, and this is one of my favorite patterns from the Minikins. I just like, um, first of all, you should use a non-directional fabric because the design continues from the front over to the back. Um, I just felt for me personally, the project came together quickly. This is size large, but it has three different sizes. So small, medium, and large. Um, anyway, and I just like keeping pens and pencils and cosmetics in another one of mine. So anyway, if you want to enter the March Minikins challenge, please do. It's a random drawing, so it's not a contest for who makes the best one. All you have to do to enter is just make one and post your photo. And it's a lot of fun seeing all the photos that are posted each month as well for um, the Sidewinder pouch. And here's another one that I made too. This is the one that I made um, to go inside the video. So um, this is made using some old Amy Butler fabric that I had from my stash. So this is one of my favorite fabrics ever. So I just absolutely had to use it for one of the Sidewinder pouches. And there, there is four more days left in the four pack video bundle. This is one of the patterns in the bundle. Danny's putting a graphic on the screen. It's only till March 8th. It's four PDFs, four videos, uh, $40. So that breaks down to about, well, exactly $10 for each one. It's almost like getting the video free since most of my PDF patterns cost $9. We do sell um, the videos individually, say if you're only interested in this one or if you only wanted the train case, um, you could just get the one video with the pattern if you like. Um, but the bundle's a great deal and it's only available till the end of the day on Thursday. All right, what else do we have to talk about today? Um, oh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, sewing related or bag related questions or product related to anything that I've talked about, Feel free to ask your question in the comments and I always try to get to as many questions as I can live later in the chat. So be sure to ask your questions now and we'll get to some questions in a little bit. So the fabrics uh, that I've added to my stash this week, one of them is an interfacing and I have two Disney fabrics to show you. So um, this is Woven Fuse Interfacing from gotinterfacing.com. This is comparable to ShapeFlex. So if you've made some of my patterns before, you know I always like to use Pellon ShapeFlex for my linings. The only difference between um, this and ShapeFlex is that this woven fuse interfacing is 45 inches wide where the Pellon ShapeFlex is 20 inches wide. So especially if you are, um, if you have a seam press maybe and your 
fusing your fabric to your interfacing and then cutting out your pieces. This is really nice because this is this, this is the same width as most of your quilting cottons. Um, and like I said, it's comparable to the Shape Flex. A lot of ladies in my Facebook group were talking about it earlier today if they've used it before and they said they even liked it better than the Shape Flex. So um, I got some to try. I really enjoyed using it and I'll be using it for all of my linings. But again, this is Woven Fuse and link is in the description if you wanna find out more about that. All right, so two new fun Disney fabrics that I added to my stash this week. The first one I purchased from Spoonflower. And if you're not familiar with Spoonflower, Spoonflower is sort of a print-on-demand fabric site. They also sell other things like wallpaper. You can either design your own fabric and upload the designs to the website and have it printed, or you can choose from probably millions of designs that are already on the site and you can choose your substrate. So I like using the Kona cotton because it's, um, I'm familiar with it and it's similar to, to basically all the other fabrics I have in my stash, quilting cottons. You can have canvas, knit fabrics, denim, there's tons of different things you can print on from Spoonflower. Anyway, I was looking for a Disney inspired fabric and my friend Christy from Rock Baby Scissors recommended um, a designer called EJ Rippey. Um, the link's in the description, but this fabric reminded me of the Small World ride at Disney. I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, but have you ever been to Disney? So my dilemma now um, is that growing up, every few years, my parents would take us to Disney, Disney World. And so I have it ingrained in my head that basically vacation time means going to Disney. And I don't know if my family wants to go to Disney every year. Uh, the kids have been a couple times and it's a blast. And, you know, I have major feelings about going to Disney, but I think my husband's pushing me to look for a different vacation for this year. So let me know if you have a better suggestion, but um, Disney is going to be hard to top. But anyway, that's why I wanted to show these two Disney fabrics that I just picked up this week. Um, hopefully for my sake uh, or Danny's sake, I can find a different uh, idea for vacations this year. But anyway, here's that second fabric that I added to my stash this week. Um, my friend Christina sent me this fabric and it's from sort of a custom designed um, group on Facebook called Backstitch Fabrics. The link's in the description, but this is some artwork created by, I think, one of the owners, and it's obviously all Disney related, but I, somebody in my Facebook group the past week posted a Cumberland backpack that they made with this fabric, and I just had to have the same backpack, so um, my friend Christina very kindly sent me this fabric to use. It's a woven fabric, but some of the fabrics that they sell at Backstitch Fabrics are um, garment fabrics, um, lycras and knits. But anyway, this one was really fun and I can't wait to make something with it. And I'm going to try to get squeeze every last little bit of fabric out of this that I can because I only have the one yard. Um, all right, so my, I guess, little personal story for the week is that I went to the dentist this past week and... I don't know if you're familiar with an elevator pitch, but basically an elevator pitch is um, a summary of what you do for a living in just a few sentences. So a short, uh, basically what it would take, you know, the time it would take to go up in an elevator with someone. And I thought I had my story down, but I feel like I know you all get what I do out there, you know, because just because you're watching, but I feel like the general public doesn't really understand what I do. So. My previous idea for an elevator pitch was um, I produce videos and instructions on how to make uh, sewing patterns. And I told this to my dentist because he, he was asking what I did. And when I told him my elevator pitch, he said, oh, so you show people how to sew buttons on. And I was like, well, not quite, you know, mostly it's for bags, but clearly I need to improve on my elevator pitch. It's a hard time communicating to people what I do because I feel like the word sewing patterns, people just don't know what sewing patterns are. And I feel like it's really confusing and I feel like I have all this excitement for what I do, but when I try to communicate to other people, it's like, oh, their eyes kind of glaze over because that, you know, that sounds boring or that doesn't make sense. And I, I feel like the people in this area think that I sit at home and watch uh, movies all day and eat candy. And basically I'm just sitting in the house all day, but we're really working hard filming videos during the day. and. Uh, writing sewing patterns on the computer, so uh, I think I need to come up with a different elevator pitch, but um, Hopefully I'll have something better to tell my dentist next time I go in for a visit All right, so I want to ask and it's that time 
in the show, but if you're a bag lady, let me know in the comments and be proud about it. Say, I'm a bag lady. And or always, a bag dude. Or a bag dude, sorry. Danny's trying to get the whole bag dude movement going. He's, Danny noticed on Tuesday that a guy was watching um, Alexander, I think he said his name was, and then um, a guy made a purchase on, on our site later in that same day. I'm not sure if it was the same guy or not, but um, Danny doesn't want um, the bag dudes neglected. So bag lady and bag dude. <laughs> Uh, all right, so my my book review for this week is for a book called Modern Medallion Workbooks. And before I get over to that book review, I have a previous love of medallion quilts. If you're not familiar with medallion quilts, a medallion quilt starts out with a center design, and then each row, sort of each border row, is a different design, and you keep adding borders till you get to the full size of the quilt. So Danny's going to put a an, a photograph on on your screen right now. This is a quilt I made a few years ago from the book called Liberty Love. I super love this quilt. It was hanging on our dining room wall until we ripped the wall down this past October. Um, but when I asked Danny last minute to get that picture ready to go on the show, he sort of... <sighs> I don't want to say Danny hates that quilt. He strongly dislikes it and it has nothing to do with the design of the quilt or the book or anything like that. Um, but everything to do with my fabric choices. He didn't like the no yellow. Way. He didn't like the yellow. I think my color choices were, I love the quilt personally, but he just did not care for it. Put it up on the screen one more time. I don't see anything. No, I don't like it. No, please put it on the screen. I don't see anything wrong with this. I used um, various text print fabrics for the background, and these are all art gallery solids, which I really love. And I, to me, the colors looked great, but... I think he's happy to have that quilt down off the wall now. Anyway, that's the lead up to um, my book review for this week because it's also dealing with medallion quilts. And let me step over here and, and I'll show you some pages from the book. Okay, so this is what the book cover looks like, the modern medallion workbook. Um, there's lots of medallion projects in here. Not necessarily, um, when I first bought the book, I thought it was sort of a... Well, because it says workbook, I thought it would be more, um, all right, if you want to add this border, oh, here's the original um, quilt um, to match the one that I made. So this was the original from that Liberty Love book. Um, anyway, these are all complete quilt projects and they're all medallion quilts. So just basics on, you know, quilting, cutting. This is actually my favorite quilt from the book. I don't know if it's just because it's in solids, but I just like, uh, the flying geese in the middle and I feel like each of the borders are unique especially this one with the the axes on it so let me show you some of the other projects the book is really well written um, detailed explanation for making the quilts here's another one that's really cute too this one's kind of a more improv with the star in the middle and this was a collaborative book, so each quilt in the book was designed by a different person. I love this one too. This one was made in Allison Glass Fabrics, one of my favorite fabric designers. And I think we're getting close to my favorite, my second favorite quilt that's in the book. I have way too many quilting books and not enough hours in the day, clearly. Sir, you have a pressing comment I have to put through. Oh, there's a pressing comment? Okay, Danny says there's a pressing comment. The yellow's too loud. Deborah says the yellow's too loud. So Deborah's siding with Danny. <laughs> Thanks for... <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Linda says, how do you get the comments off the Facebook screen? If you're on tablet or a phone, someone said last week you slide to the right or left. And it should remove the comments so you can see the video by itself. Oh, are they going to be able to hear you, Danny? I'm pretty sure they can. Okay. Danny says if you want to move the comments off your screen so you can see more of um, the actual video, just swipe either left or right. He was not sure which one, but thank you for that, Danny. Oh. This is my other favorite quilt in the book, and I love that it's not just a square. You're not forming more rows based on the square but on a circle so this is really cool this is designed by Latifa Safir and she has some patterns that deal with um, uh, bias um, ah, the words are escaping me check out her website though she's got some really awesome quilt patterns and she has the 
the clamshell quilt and the clamshell um, ruler as well. So anyway, those are the quilts that are in the book. There's templates in the back um, for people that like to have templates and not have to enlarge them. Um, but anyway, that's the Modern Medallion Workbook. So that's my book review for this week. So if you enjoy Social Sunday Chats, if you're watching on Facebook, I'd invite you to hit the share button and share this video with your other sewing friends. And if you're watching on YouTube, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you'll be notified of future videos that we're posting. Okay, so I saw a question in my Facebook group. It was either today or yesterday regarding um, pattern pieces, cutting out pattern pieces. And I just wanted to show you how you can save pattern pieces so that they're sort of permanent and not paper, which can rip or um, tear. So I went ahead and printed out a pattern piece and this is from that cork eyeglass case that I showed you before. So this is one of the pieces for that cork eyeglass case pattern. So I've got the, the pattern, the paper pattern printed out and I've got some quilters template plastic here. So this is just a clear plastic. You can find it in the quilting section at your local big box store, at your local quilt shop, or there's a link in the description if you can't find it locally and you wanna just purchase it online. So I've got a little scrap of that um, template plastic. I use this a lot for saving my pattern pieces for English paper piecing because I, I do a lot of that on the side as well. So I've just got a permanent marker here. I'm gonna trace around my pattern piece onto the plastic. And you'll wanna be a little bit more careful than I'm being for the sake of time and not being boring on, on the video. I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can. But I'm gonna just trace around the piece and then once you've got it traced, just cut it out. And uh, I couldn't find my regular scissors, so I'm using fabric scissors. Don't shoot me for that, but I'm gonna cut this out really quickly. And the nice thing about this is you can draw and write the name of the particular piece that you're saving on here as well. Another nice thing that some ladies were mentioning in my Facebook group that if you would like to transfer a pattern piece that say needs to be cut on the fold, you can draw both halves of that piece onto the quilter's template plastic so that you have a full-sized piece. So by that I mean, say if this um, pattern piece was a cut on the fold, it's not, but usually if it's cut on the fold it says that and it's a straight edge. If you wanted to transfer the whole piece, you would transfer the whole piece onto the plastic so you would have both halves. And then when you go to cut out your fabric, instead of placing it on the fold, um, especially if you're having trouble with accuracy, you can be a little bit more accurate by having the whole piece represented and then place it on your fabric. So again, you can go ahead and write on this template plastic. I'm gonna write front pattern piece, cut two, uh, sorry, cut one, cut one, and then the name of the pattern, cork eyeglass case. So it's really nice to just conserve all your pieces so that you have sort of a hard copy. Anyway, so just a little, quick tip for conserving pattern pieces and this um, template plastic is really nice and inexpensive and you can find it in bigger packs too. I think the link that I posted was for a six pack but I have a 24 pack that I bought a long time ago and it was really inexpensive per piece. So anyway, nice way to save um, your pattern pieces. So let's see if there was anything else. Oh, let's um, let me announce the winner for last week's giveaway and then we'll get to some questions. So if you have any last minute questions, go ahead and pop your question in a comment and um, Danny will be putting some questions up on the screen. The winner from last week's giveaway, which was two su um, supply kits for my four pack video bundle. The winner was Terry Maffitt and I've already, I apologize if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but I've already contacted Terry um, for her address for the um, sending out of her prize. So congratulations to Terry. Um, we have another giveaway for tonight, which we'll get to after I answer some questions. So, all right, Danny, without further ado. Did you have a question asked them about how they store their patterns? Oh, I do. Thanks for the reminder. Danny's reminding me, um, since I was showing you how you can use the quilter's template plastic, um, I had a question for you. Let me know in the comments. How do you store your patterns? So, how I cur currently store my patterns is I transfer... Um, pieces to the either the quilters template plastic or um, Pell on true grid which is sort of a not really an interfacing but it has little one inch blue squares all over it and you can also write on it and that's also nice to save pattern pieces because the true grid doesn't rip so anyway 
if I'm working on a pattern, especially a PDF pattern, or even a garment pattern where I do some adjustments and I wanna save my pieces, I keep everything in the original envelope and then I have everything in a, sort of a, a plastic container with a lid. Not the most efficient, um, so if you have a better way, let me know in the comments and maybe I can sort of upgrade my pattern storage so I'm a little more uh, productive and um, so I can have my patterns looking nicer in my sewing room. Jennifer wanted to know what type of snap did you use and do you sell on your site? Yes, um, let me reach over here and grab. All right, so the snap that I had on, I think you're talking about this one. This is a pearl snap and it comes in different finishes that I saw on my site, so different metallic looking finishes. But this is the tool that you use to install the snap. It's called the snap setter. So you just need this tool and a hammer and the snaps. Uh, the tool's $9 on my website and we also have the replacement snaps. And we also sell the hammer. So the hammer that we sell has three different sizes of screwdrivers. Um, that sort of unscrew in the handle so it's just one hammer and then you can take out the screws as you need them but this tool is really fast and easy I've tried other tools that I purchased from the big box store and I could only get the snaps to go in maybe about a third of the time even with Danny helping me so um, the snaps go in every single time with the snap setter tool so it's nice and handy all right Empress Noel, Noel wants to know what needle to use on the cork please I use the Microtex Schmetz needles. Let me reach over and grab. I usually buy like a hundred pack on, on eBay, um, but you can get smaller packs of I think five as well. Um, but again, this is the Schmetz Microtex needle uh, for sewing on cork or, or leather. You can use that for other substrates as well. Patricia wanted to know what was the pen you just used to write on the pattern piece? It didn't smudge. It was a permanent marker. It's old. I'm not sure what the brand is, but I just bought some Micron permanent um, thin tip markers on Amazon and they come in packs of I think five. The reason I like the Micron um, markers is because I was going to use one for transferring an embroidery design but a lot of people use them for quilt labels like writing a quilt label on the back of the quilt, um, your name and who you're giving the quilt to and maybe a personal message so um, those Micron pens on Amazon are really great as well. And um, I have a friend who was a previous archivist at a museum and she recommends those Micron pens also. Okay, Luz wants to know what are those studs in the bag next to you? Um, so these are rivets. They just go through the fabric. I just make a hole through the fabric first and I, I use double capped rivets. So that me double capped rivets means um, the, what it looks like on this side. It looks like from the underside as well. So it could be a, a double sided item. I do have a video on my YouTube channel for, sh I show my rivet press and I explain the different, um, because my rivet press has different dies, different sizes of dies and each die does a different, has a different purpose. So um, if you're interested, check that, you that video on my YouTube channel and you can see what dies, where I got them from, what sizes and all that. Sarah B wanted to know how often do you change out your needles? So, I've been a bit lazy lately. Normally I like to, ch in the past I like to change my needles every project if I'm making a full bag or even a quilt. Um, my grandma finds that a bit wasteful so <laughs> recently she started asking me for my needles, bef you know, so I was not throwing them out so she could have them. She's really thrifty. Um, but I'd rather change out the needle before I notice, start noticing some problems because especially if you're sewing on something that makes permanent holes like cork or leather, I'd rather have a fresh needle and the needle to go through really cleanly. So I generally change out after every project or two. Elaine wanted to know, can I top stitch the amethyst bag after it's all together? Um, yes, you can. The lid will be, um, if you're talking about sewing, top stitching the lid, yes, the lid would be super easy to do at the very end after you finish the entire bag. You can certainly top stitch that. Um, the bottom, I don't believe I top stitched the bottom of that amethyst bag in the actual pattern, but um, it can be done just by smooshing the side panel out of the way as you're top stitching. Lynn wanted to know what, what white pen do you use to mark your fabric? Let me, I think it's right over here, yep. I use uh, Clover Choco, which is just chalk. It comes in this, uh, it's sort of like a wheel on the tip and you can write on your fabric with it. I use this if I'm marking on the right side of the fabric because the chalk goes away. It's not permanent. 
I also like to use uh, friction pens, but I, when I'm using the friction pens, I don't like to use it on the right side of the fabric because sometimes when you iron away the friction pen, it leaves a permanent like white mark where the pen used to be. So I usually like to use these on the wrong side of the fabric or on areas that won't be seen in the finished bag. So say if I was marking under where these straps would be, you wouldn't be seeing that area and then I would be okay with using the friction. Otherwise I use the Clover Chaco and white. I only like white. I've tried the other colors. It comes in um, gray, yellow, blue, and pink. And I've tried all those other colors and they didn't come off my fabric that I used them on, including a really nice uh, dress I made with horses all over it. So the fabric on the horse dress was white with uh, teal horses on it and I used the pink chalk on it and I couldn't get the pink chalk to go away which was really sad but it was on the back of the dress so I guess it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Anyway, just get the white clover chaco. Yvonne wanted to know where do you buy your handbag zippers, the double zipper ones like on that renegade bag next to you? Yeah, so um, here's another view. Maybe you can see the two zippers on this uh, crimson and clover train case. I sell 30 inch and 40 inch um, handbag zippers on my website. Um, just go to SoSweetness.com and hit the Notions tab. Um, but anyway, these zippers come with the two pulls on them already. And the handbag zippers are a little bit wider. The zipper tape is an inch and a quarter wide. And the zippers are manufactured by Annie, um, who makes, no, sorry, by, by Annie, who makes uh, Soft and Stable as well. So um, she uses a lot of the handbag zippers in her patterns. And they come in tons of different colors, so you can match any project with them. Trina wanted to know, did she say what size Microtex needles? My video cut out for a few, few seconds. Um, I just have the Schmetz Microtex, um, the 90, size 90 is what my package says. Yep. Um, all right, any other questions? Dawn wanted to know, what do you suggest to use for piping? What size do you suggest? Do you suggest? I, my personal favorite is um, the Dritz uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch cotton cord is the official name that they have on the package. I like it because it's a soft cording. It's not too rough and scratchy even though it's going inside the fabric, but um, I just like that size. And that's the size that I used on the piping on this train case. Um, I, just, I just like the finished size. It looks really nice. Um, you can buy the pre-bought um, the, the store-bought pre-finished piping, so the cording's already inside the fabric, but I find that the widths on that is not um, convenient or what I, what I like to use, and sometimes I feel like the fabric's a little bit scratchy on those for the, the store-bought piping. So anyway, I, use, I usually just like to make my own. Roxanne wanted to know, can I use a double zipper on the airplane bag? Uh, you sure can. Um, mine is in the other room. I can see it from here, but I can't grab it without ripping my microphone out, but I did use the handbag zipper with the two pulls on the airplane bag, so you definitely could. Donna wanted to know what kind of rivet setter do you use and do you have a good source for them? Yeah, check my video on my YouTube channel. I have a whole video on my rivet press. It's a tabletop press. Uh, it's right over here. Let me pull it out real quick. So this is my rivet press. It's really heavy um, and it comes, you purchase different dies depending on what you want done. So this is a the actual die for this exact rivet. That's what I used to put it in, but um, you just change out the dies as you perform different functions. So if you wanna punch a hole in your fabric, if you wanna um, put grommets in, this can do a whole bunch of different things. I even bought some purse feet, which I haven't used yet, some like really huge ones. Um, so I have a separate die. Each thing has a separate die. Uh, okay, any other questions, Danny? Michelle wanted to know, do you know if the wooly ironing mat can be ordered to a custom fit? Good question. So this is the mat she's talking about. I, I have two of these, so I use it for um, filming videos because I use it as a pressing mat also. It's about, I think, three quarters of an inch in thickness. And you, as you can see, it's really flexible and it's made of all wool. As far as I'm aware, it comes in three different sizes. So this is uh, 17 inches by 17 inches. They also make it in eight and a half by eight and a half. And then um, the biggest one, which I wanna get, which is uh, 24 by 17. So um, this is really nice to use. Um, yeah, no complaints about it. I feel like it heats the fabric up really fast. 
Linda May wanted to know, where do you get your needles in that large of numbers of needles? I just buy these on eBay every few years because I buy a pack of 100. I also like using organ needles, which I also buy on eBay, also in a pack of 100. So I have um, Schmetz needles and the organ 9014 needles. All right. Oh, my lid came off my needle box. Um, Evie wanted to know, did you buy it at Gold Star Tool or where? My Rivet Press was from a website called Minkus Margot, and she also has an Etsy shop. Um, the link in um, the Rivet video that I have on YouTube should link to um, her website. I'm not sure if I also link to her Etsy shop. I might have. Pat wanted to know, how on earth do you get the snaps through the pleats on the Oslo bag? That area is so thick. We had three ladies working on that bag today, and none of us had any luck. So um, make sure you're hammering the snap setter on a solid surface. I know in my video I showed I was hammering it through the woolly mat, but you really need to, to have a, a solid hard surface and um, just hit it hard. Um, the solid surface is the most important thing because I, when I tried to hammer mine into my woolly mat, the mat sort of absorbed the... Um, what's the word, Danny? When you're hitting something? You smack it? Yeah. Never mind. Um, it just sort of absorbed all of the force. <laughs> the force is what I was looking for. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you're hitting into a hard surface. If you're still having trouble, you can go ahead and move that snap a little bit further down so it's not in the pleat. It'll still close and actually um, there's plenty of clearance in the flap if you need to move the snap a little bit further down to get away from that pleat area, that'll be fine too. Amy wanted to know, who is the maker of that small hand iron? Oh, the, I showed a small iron a week or two ago and that was, uh, the brand name was Steamfast. So that was the Steamfast iron. It's in my cabinet, otherwise I would pull it out. Um, but Steamfast is the maker of that little iron. Shelly wanted to know, isn't it great that Free Spirit was purchased and all the designers will go on to a new home? I know you love Tula. Yeah, so um, I think the news was last month, Free Spirit Fabrics, which um, was the home to many designers, including Tula Pink and Amy Butler, which are two of my favorites. But they announced that the company was closing and all the designers were sort of uh, scrambling to find new designing homes. Um, a company called Jaftex purchased Free Spirit last week, so um, Jaftex owns other um, fabric brands, including Studio E Fabrics, and so Free Spirit Fabrics will just be owned by a different company. Um, as far as I've seen, the, the fabric lines will still be produced and shipped as usual. I was really looking forward to Tula Pink's De La Luna fabric line, which was sort of a Halloween inspired fabric line that was supposed to drop in June. I believe it's still going to drop in June as promised. I saw a video on Tula's, I think it was Instagram stories, Tula showed a video of the De La Luna fabric, um, her fabric samples arriving, so um, I guess everything is, is going ahead as scheduled, so that's a really good thing. Diane wanted to know, are your, um, on your retreats, are they one day or more? So my sewing retreats, um, I have one coming up in June, we still have a few tickets left, it's June 21st through the 24th, and it's always Thursday evening through s Sunday afternoon, so... Thursday evening, we have a welcome mixer. I introduce myself, everybody gets their swag bags. Um, they get to uh, meet at the mixer. And then we have full days of sewing, Friday and Saturday. So there's cl a class on Friday, a class on Saturday. You can sew until midnight, which is a lot of fun. Everybody stays up sewing really late. And then Sunday is uh, sort of checkout day. We're, we're in the hotel until noon on Sunday. So it's the full weekend. It's in a great area uh, with a lot of restaurants. A lot of ladies uh, went out to eat with their new friends that they met at the retreat. Um, some ladies went, there's a movie theater within walking distance. Some ladies went to see, I think it was a new Tom Cruise movie that was out last time the, at the last retreat. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. And because the hotel where we have the retreat is right by um, the train that takes you to downtown Chicago, uh, because the retreat is in Chicago, a lot of the ladies also went downtown for the day after after the retreat was over. So everything's really convenient, conveniently located. The hotel for the retreat is just five minutes away from O'Hare Airport. And there's a free shuttle service from the airport to the hotel and back. So uh, really conveniently located. And uh, we had a lot of fun last time. So the next one's in June. And uh, it's on my website, so sweetness.com. 
Um, Audrey wanted to know, I haven't gotten my Oslo bag pattern. Um, the Oslo bag was a free video that we posted uh, this past Tuesday, and it's a free pattern for newsletter subscribers. We had some issues with our newsletter signups. Um, they weren't as reliable in the past. Um, I worked really hard this week um, coordinating with both my newsletter subscription service and with my web my web developer to get some um, some things accomplished. So basically, everyone would get the news uh, the free pattern. If you haven't gotten it, please email me. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's S A R A at sosweetness.com, and I'm happy to help you if you didn't get that free pattern. <laughs> Bonnie wanted to know, is that a Moscow Mule? Um, it's a Moscow Mule glass, but there's just water inside, I promise. Um, my throat dries out sometimes, especially when I do these live chats, and my husband's always on me. You know, you can't cough. It's really loud in the microphone, so I started bringing some water in here, so if my throat starts getting a little dry, I just have the water handy anyway. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Okay, I think that's about it on the questions. Uh, we're still deciding, because we're always last minute Charlie's about this, we're still deciding what our free video is gonna be for this Tuesday. I'm debating whether it should be a clutch or if I should show some more behind the scenes stuff because I've had some requests um, for beh behind the scenes what it looks like when I'm working on a sewing pattern. So I was thinking we'll save the free clutch for next week and maybe this week we'll do behind the scenes, what it takes me to get to designing a sewing pattern. And also, um, I've had a request for invisible magnetic snaps, how you sew those in and um, how you attach them to fabric to sew them into a bag. So I'm thinking those two for this Tuesday. So if you're around uh, for Ask Sarah this Tuesday, the live show's at 7 p.m. Central Time. Okay, so let's get to the giveaway for this week. Danny's gonna put a couple pictures up on the screen. Um, the giveaway for this week is a crafty class by Jessica Long, and the crafty class is called Startup Project Modern Hand Embroidery, and Jessica has kindly offered a giveaway to one of my viewers for her crafty class. I actually watched the entire class earlier today, and it's for these two projects she's showing on the screen. Okay, you can take those away now, Danny. Thank you. So her crafty class is great. Um, I think I used to think embroid hand embroidery was just about using your stitches to outline a design, but seeing Jessica Long's crafty class, I feel like there's so many more possibilities. It's almost like, and one of the chapters in her class is called thread painting. It is almost like thread painting. You're using thread to, to create a work of art or a painting. So um, I was really excited to watch her class. It was really good. I'm going out of town. I'm teaching in Kansas City this week. So I always like to have some handwork prepped for on the plane and in the hotel room at night. So um, I'm gonna be working on one of Jessica's um, wreath projects. Uh, her wreaths have two different hoops to create a wreath, so I'm really excited to work on that on the plane. Anyway, the giveaway question for this week is what type of handwork do you do? If you're watching on YouTube, please wait to leave your comments until after the live show's over because for now, YouTube is removing all the live comments after the show's over. Danny told me that they're fixing that soon, but for now, that's how it works on YouTube. Facebook, you can go ahead and comment right away. Let me know the answer to this question. What type of handwork do you do? And that'll be your entry to the giveaway. I'll choose one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day, Saturday, March 10th. And the, the winner will win of Jessica's Crafty Class, which is really beautiful and amazing. So um, good luck to the giveaway. Be sure if you're on YouTube to leave your comment after the show's over. Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time.